So let's continue on and add some presentation to our news article layout. Um, if you will remember, this is what our article looks like. Very simple. We've got a header, a bit of a logo in there, picture, category, and then some typographic hierarchy headings, etc. Put it down the bottom. Let's jump in to CodePen. Uh, this is what we produced um, previously. We're wrapping everything in a main tag. Um, uh, a reminder that we don't need to include the full HTML um, page structure. We don't need to include doc type HTML tags, um, the head tag or the body tag. And what we're writing here exists inside the body tag and um, CodePen adds those that surrounding structure for us. Um, and I'll show that to you when we export this um, to some text files towards the end of the session. Um, I think what we might do first is work with uh, work at putting together the single column layout. Um, so if we have a look at our layout here, our article kind of floats in the center of the page um, and it sits on a gray background. So let's implement that. Now we'll need to pull up our CSS tab. We'll need to refer back to our HTML from time to time, but we're mainly going to be working our CSS tab today. So what we need to do is we need to write CSS rules that target the HTML elements that we've previously written. So in this case, we're going to target the main tag. So this fella here. All right, now we do that by, um, and I might just um, write this out. We target the element first, and then inside the these curly brackets, um, we target a, um, a property. We separate the property with a colon, and then we give that property a value. And we close that off with um, a semicolon. Now we can write that like, we can separate that out and we can add lots of different properties to that one particular element. So there's our basic equation, I suppose. Um, so let me just go back a little bit and our element that we're going to target, right, is the main tag. So we'll add in main there and we'll give that main element our first property. Um, and we're going to give it a width. Oops, didn't need to put that column in. And the, the value of that width is going to be a pixel measurement and um, I designed this to be 1000 pixels across but I might not have enough space for that. You can see that it's finishing here but I might make it a bit thinner just for this demonstration just so that it's um, a little bit more obvious what's happening here. So you can see now that that width um, property has been implemented in our preview there. All right. Um, the other thing that I want to do is have that column floating in the center. And we can do that by adding a margin or adding a box property um, of margin um, to our main tag. And I'm going to add 20 pixels to the top and bottom. Well, currently it's 20 pixels all the way around. You see it just popped out. But I'm going to add auto to the left and right. So if I add two values in here, um, I'm kind of accessing the top and bottom values. And in the second value there, I'm accessing the 
left and right values. So you can see now that um, by adding a margin of 20 and auto, I've got all that content to sit in the middle of our page, which is pretty good. Um, all right, to add in the uh, the grey background, let's um, let's uh, let's add a body. Target the body um, of the page. So the body is pretty much everything. It wraps around everything that we've um, that we've written up here. Oops, uh, to date. Um, so I'm going to add a background color. It's going to be a gray, and I'm writing in a hexadecimal value here. Um, if you ever want to find your hexadecimal values and you've got Photoshop open, you can use the color picker to pick a color, and you'll be able to get that hexadecimal value. Now you can see that the whole body background has turned gray which is pretty good. I'm going to add a couple of other things into the body here um, to start working on our typography, I suppose. And right at the body element, I'm going to add in a font. And so that will mean that every other element inside the body takes on that font. Um, I'm simply going to add Helvetica. Hopefully, yep, so all of our type has changed into Helvetica. And we might give that Helvetica, or all our type on our page, um, a grey colour. And the colour that I'm using, it's a bit of a darker grey. Seventy, seventy, seventy. 70, 70. Okay, so we've added a little bit of subtlety there and we've also added our page um, or centered our column within the page. All right, now we've got a couple of kind of structural elements here, header, section and footer. Um, let us uh, target those um, in sequence. We'll start with the header. Oops. Now our header in our design has got a red color in the background. Let's just quickly remind ourselves. So let's add that background color. And it's um, a bit of a strange one. And so I definitely do not remember <laughs> these codes. I do go and reference the Photoshop color picker um, to, uh, to grab those colors. Okay, so I've added in that red color you can see there. And we want to add some spacing to the box model in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some padding. So that's kind of sits within that element, spaces out the elements within that element. Um, and the padding, pretty extreme. Um, I'm going to add 30 pixels to the top and bottom. And I'm going to add 140 pixels. Well, this is how I initially designed it. Um, but that was for when I had a thousand uh, pixel width. So I might just drop that down a little bit, maybe to 80. Okay, so that's enough padding. So we've got 20 pixels top and bottom. And we've got 80 pixels left and right. So that'll be perfect for us. Um, now, I have already loaded an image um, for our, um, our header there uh, onto a, an image 
um, server and I'll provide that image link for you. I'm just going to copy and paste it from my notes here and replace this link here. I might put it inside that link. Oh, sorry, copied the, <laughs> copied the wrong image link there. Let's try that again. Oh, that's, that's my logo, I believe. Excellent. Um, looking, looking good. Now that logo does look a little bit too big for, uh, for my uh, design there. Um, and that is because of our really tiny little screen here. And this is initially how I designed it at a thousand um, wide. So just bear in mind that that's why my um, why our logo is looking a little bit big in that spot. Let's just ignore that. It'll be fine. Um, okay, so that's our header in place. Let's have a look at the section. And the section gives us that white background of the article. Um, so we'll add in background. Oops, got it right. Can use those hints and we can simply write white for um, for the color white but you'll get to know that the hexadecimal value for white is six f's and in opposition to that black is six zeros um, so we've got the the white of our page in place um, what else do we need to do there? Add some padding so it matches up with our header. Um, and I might simply copy that padding value from our header and add it in there. And that'll space things out nicely for us. Um, all right, let's move down to the footer. I made a little mistake with the footer. Or, you know what I've done? I haven't put a, I haven't closed off that section. That's a bit of a mistake on my behalf. Um, so that should put our footer outside of that um, white uh, article section. So you can see now that we've got um, our main tag, our header tag, our section tag. Our section finishes there and our foot is outside the section and then the main closes everything off. Sorry about that. Um, so I'm going to add some style to that footer. Pretty simply, I'm just going to add that same padding value. So that everything's nice and in line and in that grid. If you want to tidy up your CSS, you can select all of your text and go format CSS. And it will make it all nice and tidy and easy for you to read. Um, all right, so that's looking pretty good. Um, so let's get on with uh, styling the type. Um, and what else do we need to do? I would like to just make sure that my article images are going to the full width of that column there. So that's what I might do. I might target the section, but the images inside the section. So I've added two elements together there. So the section and then any images with inside that section. And I can give that a value. And just watch the image. Hopefully it should snap to the width of the, um, of the column. So there's padding here, there's padding here, and now that image goes to the full width, full available width within the section. So looking pretty good. Um, let's look at our hierarch type hierarchy. And we can, um, and that's just going to be about changing the size of 
um, each of those bits of type. Um, so let's start by changing the paragraphs, we'll work our way up. Um, and I'm just going to add a font size of, I believe it was 20 pixels for body copy, which is pretty big with this very thin, might make it a bit smaller, just on the fly, maybe 16, which is around about the default size. Um, and then I'll go page two. So these are our, all of our secondary headings. So when I um, add, so when I have secondary headings, they're all going to be called H2 or they're going to be H2 elements. And we'll add a font size for H2 elements. Thirty-eight pixels. That does look too big in this instance. Might go for thirty, and then H one something a bit bigger than that. Maybe forty-two. Oops, thirty-eight. Thirty-eight will do. I could add some line height in there if I wanted to, but I'm going to quickly finish off um, by styling at least this little category tag pointer. Um, and we'll remember when we added that in to our HTML, we added a class. So let's style our first class down the bottom here. Now, if we want to target a class that we've our own class that we've written. All we have to do is write a period or a full stop and then the name of that class that we've decided on and then we can give that values. Um, so in our design, the main thing is that it's reversed out white on red. So what we'll do is we'll give it a background color the color was the same as the header, so I'm going to grab that. And you can see that it's filled in that element. By default, um, elements are set to display at the full width there. So when I put that background color in, you can see it goes the full width of the column. We'll fix that out fix that up um, in a sec and I'll talk about um, the display property of elements uh, block and inline at another time. Uh, we can, um, well, let me just add in some color to reverse out our little pointer, um, give it some padding. We're going to have 10 pixels at the top and 20 pixels left and right. Uh, I'm going to make it uppercase. So I'm going to use the text transform property. And uppercase. And finally, this property here allows us to manipulate, whoops, no, not spelled like that, display, allows us to manipulate whether or not elements kind of go full width and stack all on top of each other or whether or not they can exist side by side. And the display property that I'm going to use is inline block. We'll talk more about that time but that gets us um, gets that uh, tag uh, nice and styled how we want it um, so you'll, you'll notice that it's not exactly as I planned in that it's a bit thinner and more kind of compressed but generally we get the idea um, header in place all of our footer and our section is in place typography is in place 
We've finished the design now and what we're yet to do is to export um, export our work. Oops, better, uh, better save. Just make sure everything's saved into our file. We go down to this little tab here, export a zip. And this packages everything up for us and we can download a zip. Show that in my finder, and there's a few confusing um, sorry, it's on the wrong screen. Um, here's our um, here's our a zip that we've downloaded, and I'll just open that up, have a look at the files in there, and what we get is um, what we get is a couple of different folders here and the one that we want to have a look in and we'll cover this a few more times is the one that's titled dist or distribution and if we just pull that out and have a look at it on the desktop oops that's on the wrong screen Sorry. Here we go. Here's the dist folder. And inside the dist folder, we've got an index.html and a css.html. We can actually open up those files and, um, and continue to work on them in an application like Brackets or um, Dreamweaver. There's plenty of text editors around. Um, but these are the files that we'll put on a public server and our um, and our audiences will be able to access those files on a public server. And so I've got a, just a browser here. If I drag in my index file into that browser, you'll see that our page is in place and ready to go.